Hey, Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Today, uh, I believe, no, I've done a couple of retros. Actually, no, I can't remember if I did them here on in, or on Instagram, uh, which you can follow, Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast, on Instagram at Audible Interlude Podcast. Uh, and check out G.I. Joe related stuff. And there's also a podcast the first Friday of every month. So today we're taking a look at this brand new Stalker that is part of the G.I. Joe Retro Series. I haven't been opening these on camera a whole lot because honestly I haven't bought a ton of them because I haven't been able to find them. This one was delivered to me from Walmart. This is a Walmart exclusive line. And as you can see, it's pretty pristine. I'm almost hesitant to open it for two reasons. One, because it's so unusual to get anything carded from Walmart in good condition. Uh, but two, because there seems to be a whole new style going on with these retro figures, and I'm pretty into it. And if they're going to continue and potentially make the original carded 9 with this new tooling, I kind of would like to have those mint on card. But for now, we're going to open this guy up because I really want to take a closer look at what looks to be a new evolution in three and three quarter inch Joes. So, so let's look at the packaging here. Uh, it, it leaves a little bit to be desired. Obviously, we're missing a real American hero, which if this is, I understand the move away from a real American hero because G.I. Joe is a global uh, international task force or whatever. Like, I get it. It's not the 80s anymore. But these are the 80s Joes. So I don't understand why we couldn't still have real American hero on the card uh, I'm also missing the white trim around it. I don't know why that was taken away. Uh, but otherwise, we've got some really nice card art. In this instance, the figure accurately reflects... Well, mostly accurately reflects the card art. Uh, and then the G.I. Joe, big and bold at the top. And a on the front of the card... Uh, a minimum of extra stuff. We don't have everything written in five different languages, uh, which granted there's not really anything to be written, but uh, it, it, you know, it looks good. And once you have, you know, nine together, 10 together, 12 together, whatever, it's going to look uniform and you're going to have sort of a new aesthetic. So that's why I'm kind of wanting these men on card. We'll see. And then on the back, we've got, of course, the horrible file card, with one, two, three, four, five different languages crammed into that file card. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, you may as well just leave it off at this point. Okay, no, I wouldn't leave it off because it's still nice to know. Uh, he's a ranger. His primary specialty is infantry, secondary, medic, interpreter, birthplace, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, Michigan, excuse me. Generals may win campaigns, but it's the sergeants who win the battles, mostly by yelling and kicking butt. Uh, I don't believe that's... Uh, the original <laughs> file card at all. Uh, but overall, this presentation is pretty good, and it's still exciting to see Joe's back at retail. Let's open this guy up and take a look at the figure. Uh, oh, and go to gijoe.com uh, for really nothing about the retro series. Mostly classified figures, which you can find reviews of uh, every single classified Joe at this very YouTube channel. Uh, all right, looking good. Got a good number of accessories in here. Let's try and get everything out as carefully as possible. Uh, none of this is rubber. This is all pretty, well, it's a little soft, but it's not like rubbery, flimsy stuff. Uh, it feels good. I've uh, got a little bend right there, but that's fine. We can fix that. A uh, little, little heat will take care of that. Uh, but yeah, this stuff is not rubber, and I really appreciate that. That's one of my biggest gripes with modern toys is when the accessories are just that super, super soft PVC that's so flexible, it's it's just worthless. Let's see, even the knife. Uh, well, the knife is pretty flexible, but it looks nice. Look at that. Look at that painted blade. Uh, the detail looks good. That's a good-looking knife. I like it. So we've got a knife, a pistol, and a couple of... Uh, Different submachine guns. I'm not going to attempt to name here. I'll go ahead and out myself as somebody who does not know what the heck guns are called just by looking at them. I used to, because of G.I. Joe, I used to. 
but that knowledge is long gone. Uh, here, interesting to note that his battle stand, which, by the way, not a foot stand, this is a battle stand, uh, does say Sergeant Stalker, and not, as the card art says, uh, Lonzo, Lonzo Stalker Wilkinson, which I think this is a copyright thing. Uh, maybe, I don't know, it doesn't matter, who cares, it's Stalker, we know it's Stalker, but Sergeant Stalker, very nice, and I don't, I also don't mind, because when I was a kid, he was just Stalker, uh, I don't mind him being Sergeant Stalker, that's fine by me. Let's take a look at this figure. Uh, I've got the nice web gear, uh, fits really well. Uh, I've got a really nice collection of 25th anniversary figures, and their, some of their web gear doesn't look great, but Stalker here, uh, it's nice and snug, it fits, it looks good, and it's got a holster, it's got a place for the knife, uh, I, I think th this is great, this is very well done, articulation wise, uh, no, let's see here, no, he's got a waist joint as well, now, I have been complaining about cut joints at the waist for a long time now, but on three and three quarter inch figures, it's not quite as big a deal as it is on larger scale figures. Uh, this torso joint looks works really nicely. Uh, he's got a pretty decent uh, range going on there. I like that, and it looks good. It's under the web gear. Uh, his camo. Look at the way the paint. Let me twist that leg around front. Ooh, I might want to heat that up. Oh no, there we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, so uh, the camo deco looks, I think, fantastic. Uh, we're, it's even got hits up here on the upper thighs. We don't have anything on the knees. Uh, I would have liked a little something on the knees, but at the same time, it's, it's not ruining anything for me because it's, it's pretty much everywhere else. I mean, he looks, he looks like an update of Stalker. I love this portrait here. Uh, he looks a little older. He looks serious. He looks ready for action. He's got his mustache. Uh, the paint is pretty fantastic on this guy. Uh, very, very happy with that portrait. That, that to me, looks like Stalker. I think they've done a great job. I like the sculpt of the sweater with the pockets. Uh, this, this figure just looks great. Uh, the boots, we've got articulation at the top of the boot we've got the ankle joint that is the same as what we're seeing on larger scale figures now that's very impressive double jointed knees uh single jointed elbows but at this scale i really don't want double jointed elbows but it's got a nice look at that bend greater than 90 degree bend uh, and the aesthetics of it are very pleasing it doesn't break up the profile of the figure uh, with that nice deep bend, I think that's very well done. I gotta say, you guys, this is this feels to me like a leveled up version of what these retros were at first. And if going forward, we're going to see these aesthetics, uh, this tooling, because look, out of this figure, you can get well, you can get Commando Snake Eyes with a new head. Um, you can get Grunt. Well, well, we're getting Grunt. Uh, Zap. You, you, like, literally, you can get most of those figures with this tooling, and I want to see it. I'm here for it. I'm excited about the retro line now. You know, before, it wasn't really doing a whole lot for me, but now I'm excited. Uh, so hang on just a second, and we are going to take a look and compare this guy to some other modern Stalker figures. Okay, well, wait, before we do that, we got some accessories to look at. So, uh, here we have the battle stand with two foot pegs. There, were, there was a time when some of the 25th anniversary figures only had one foot peg on the battle stand, and it was really annoying. Uh, they just didn't stand quite right and weren't stable. Uh, he's got a nice stance on that. Looks great. I like it. Uh, we have the knife which will go right into that little loop there. And you may think to yourself, well, 
who in the world has a knife with the blade just out pointed at their face and you're not wrong but we'll we'll uh come back to that in a minute uh that pistol fits right into that holster which i will say this that holster is a little modern for me but that's okay who cares but i would like a little more classic holster it's it's fine it's fine so already look at that geared up looks good and now let's take we've got the two different uh guns we've got this one which is stalker's traditional gun we're just going to fit that right into that hand he's got the uh finger sculpted to go into the trigger guard and there we go looks awesome and then just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and stick this other uh, more superfluous rifle that doesn't really go with Stalker, but that's okay. Extra accessories are not a bad thing. And uh, that he doesn't hold that one quite as well. Matter of fact, I'm not sure he's going to hold this one at all. I don't know what's going on here. This has got a really fat grip on it. And then a really fat, wide stock. Uh, this almost looks more like what, like not even like fireflies. I don't, I don't know what's going on with this. It was kind of unnecessary. We didn't need it. Uh, but again, extra, extra accessories are fine. So look at that. There's Stalker, looking awesome, ready to kick some butt. But let's take a look and compare him. And we're actually going to go first. With our OG, now I say OG, this is a swivel arm battle grip version uh, because my straight arm version is safe and secure, uh, bagged up. This is the one I keep on display. But comparison wise, you can see the knife, the grenade. Uh, this one doesn't have a holster or a pistol, uh, but the dark green beret, the camo hits, like this is an update of this figure. Uh, looks, I, I think, fantastic. They did a great job. Uh, so now let's take a look at the first 25th anniversary Stalker. And this one is bigger. So this is going to be interesting to see how these new retro figures sit on the shelf with your 25th anniversary figures. Uh, but we've got here a gigantic knife. Uh, we've got the holstered pistol on this side with the lefty grip. Uh, this is still a really good figure, and I like it a lot. And I don't think I'm going to take it off the shelf necessarily. But, I mean, this is a new aesthetic. I like the proportions. I like the size. I like the detailing. Uh, this is... And I like the color on this one more. So this is an upgrade to me. Although I do like the little red detail on his beret. Uh, but man, I mean, just looking at them side by side, this looks like a more modern figure. Uh, neither, neither is bad, but this is, to me, I guess a modern version of that other one I was showing you, the, the original one. And then just for fun, here's the Sunbow Color Stalker from one of the, I think it's from one of the DVD battle packs, uh, with the, of course, the standard laser rifle and the different coloring. Uh, I just really love this one. He's in this position because he comes with a jet pack that is currently hanging from my ceiling. So he's going to go right back up on the ceiling as soon as this review is done. Uh, but just color difference between this one and the 25th that I showed you before. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to bring this guy out. So there you go. This new Stalker is awesome. To me, this is the first must-have of this retro line. And I hope going forward, we're going to see these aesthetics repeated and shared and we've got essentially a whole new line of three and three quarter inch Joes to enjoy. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and remember, yo, Joe. Smash that like button if you like needless things.